Well, hey crafty friends and happy Friday to you. On this video, I'm going to show you how to make four different farmhouse cow head projects that are so darn cute. I'm so excited to show these to you. So as you're hopping on, say hello. Let me know who's watching so I don't think I'm just standing in my craft room talking to my phone. Feel free to ask questions. Feel free to sprinkle all that good stuff. So let me show you what we're going to be using and then I'll give you a little sneak peek where we're going. We're going to make four different projects. One of them is going to be this and it's going to be reversible and seasonal. So the main ingredient for this project is this and it is a cow head MDF. It's 17 inches. It's from magnoliadiy.com. We're going to be using this. We're going to be using these little tags that are like, you know, tags that a cow would have in their ear. Um, we're going to be using a variety of different colors of paint. These are all Waverly chalk acrylic paint. This is white. This is hazelnut. This is called mineral. This one is called truffle. It's a great brown. And then we may use a little black. Um, we're gonna be using a variety of just different flowers that I picked up at Walmart for $1.47 a piece. They're kind of fall themed. Um, we're gonna be using some of this rope. That come, it's called Natural Decorative, Decorative Rope from Dollar Tree. We're gonna be using some button magnets. These came from Walmart. They were under $5 and you get a whole bunch. We're gonna be using a little bit of natural polished hemp. Um, I'm gonna use this round, but you could use something different. I also have one to show you made out of um, painter's drop cloth, a little stuffy. Um, so I just wanna share this idea with you and you could make this out of any kind of fabric you like, out of the canvas duck, out of painter's drop cloth. Um, oh, and the other main ingredient is this, which this is so cute, oh my gosh. I don't know how many of you guys have cow uh, themes in your decor, but yesterday I asked a question. I asked here on DIY Dreaming, which kind of cow people prefer, the black and white dairy cows or the Highland uh, cows that have the big long furry head? And like 230 people answered, which made me think that maybe I'm missing out, not doing enough farmhouse cow themed projects. So. We're going to take care of that today because we're going to make four different things. Um, then we might also use some of these little stencils that are called Farmhouse 12 Pack or Farmhouse Minis to do something cute on the little tags. So I'll go over the um, supplies as we're going along. And um, yeah, if you have questions, don't hesitate to ask. And at the very end, if you want links, just let me know and I'll give you one long length that has all those colors of paint. It has just everything that we used. Okay, so let's start. Let me give you a little preview where we're going and then I'm gonna show you how to do this. Okay, so this is the start of my Highland cow. What do you guys think? And I am, okay, so I'm crafty, whoops. But I am not artistic, seriously. I couldn't draw a pony to save my life. Um, and so I just went crazy with the hair. And I hope you guys all know what the um, Highland cows look like. They are so adorable. They look like big teddy bears that you just love to go up and give a hug. And they have these big, long, furry hair on their head that is adorable. So this was my attempt, my non-artistic attempt at doing that. And then I built this, which is on magnets. We're gonna do it again. I'll show you how to do it, but um, <laughs> isn't it cute? Oh my gosh. 
And then I did a little ear tag, also on a magnet. And I think this could be so cute. Just hanging on a door. If you have cows in your kitchen, hanging on your pantry door. Um, what do you guys think? Oops, which way am I? Isn't it cute? Oh my gosh, so I'm gonna show you how to recreate that on this. This is one side. We're gonna flip this over and do this side now. And I'm gonna just take my removable seasonal stuff off and here's the idea. Okay, for Christmas, you could do some flowers that look like poinsettias or you could even do little white wood snowflakes or whatever says Christmas to you. You could build one of these little hair things on magnets so it can be switched in and out for every season. Then you can do springy, then you can do summer, then you can do summer, late fall like this. You can change these out for every season. This says farm sweet farm and I did a little matching flower to go with these, which these came from Walmart. This little stem was $1.47. Um, so I'll show you how to do this in just a second. But let's start with the other side of our cow. Move this over here. And we'll do this next, and then we'll build a head thing for it. Um, okay, I just drilled some holes right here. And I just used some of my natural polished hemp with a knot on one side that'll be completely covered up by the hair piece. And um, so, before I came live today, I painted two coats of white Waverly chalk paste. Barbara says, love the cow, it's so cute. Isn't it so cute? Americana cow. Yes, Janice. Um, oh, Cheryl says, he, my cow is adorable, don't cut myself short. You know what, I, um, I was telling my friend Diane that this project is so cute that I might, I don't know, maybe I have some kind of farm house, farm animal kind of something inside of me that I need to explore more because I don't tend to do a lot of these kind of projects. Um, but anyways, okay, so I, I just put this string on it to hang it and I painted two coats of Waverly white chalk paste. Chalk, sorry, white, matte finish, no prep acrylic paint from Walmart. And then just to get a super crisp stencil impression, um, I'm gonna scoot my camera back just a little bit. I put one quick light coat of this clear matte sealer spray over the top of it outside. I just gave it one quick spray. And let me tell you why I do that and then we'll Move on. Um, okay, the reason why I like to do that is because wood is funny. And sometimes when you stencil on wood, it can grab, it can have a tendency to grab the medium and suck it into the pores and then sort of feather it out. And it can look sort of blurry but you can seal those pores so that they can't do that with a clear matte sealer spray, whether it's painted, stained, or unfinished, or with a clear wax, so that's why I did it. And we're gonna be using this stencil right here, which is called Cow Pattern. Um, I have used it a few times, so I'm not gonna fuzz it before I put it on here, but um, this time. But if you had it and it was new, I would definitely recommend that you fuzz it. Uh, because you will want it to be fuzzed. Okay, and I'm just looking to see how's gonna be the closest that I can get this whole thing covered. So let's just take it off the backing and I'm gonna sort of fiddle around. How I put it on here. You can come back and move your stencil over and cover the areas that you might have missed. 
I'm very sorry about that. My dogs are going crazy over something. I don't know if you can hear that in the background or not. Okay, so I'm just pressing my stencil down. And we're gonna be using black chalk paste from magnoliadiy.com that looks like this. These stencils, oops, if you have not worked with them before, they are great. Um, they're reusable many, 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 many times. They're adhesive, so they don't slide around. Um, they are a little stretchy. They're super detailed. They're made out of mesh, like what silk screen stencils are made out of. And if you take care of them, you can use these things for a very long, long, long time. Okay, so I'm just going to put some blobs of black chalk paste on here. Now, um, the magnets are still sitting on the other side of this cow, and we're gonna do magnets on this side too once it's starting to dry. I see lots of people hopping on. Thank you to everyone who did stars. Thank you to everyone who is sprinkling. I so appreciate that. I'm just pushing my chalk paste through the holes on my stencil. Probably have too much. <laughs> Looks like it. You want to um, get all of your areas covered and then you want to stop. <laughs> and this I think is the biggest issue that people new to stenciling have is they want to keep going over and over and over and over their stencil. Whoops, I went right off of the edge of it. And when you do that, you end up pushing excess chalk paste or ink underneath the stencil and it looks blurry. So once you get it covered, you want to be getting the big globs pulled up, but you want to stop. And this is a big surface. I should have used a bigger squeegee, but you just get some of these big blobs pulled up and then we'll finish this ear. Um, the other problem that I see a lot of new stencilers do is they're pushing way too hard on their squeegee. And this is a squeegee. If it's bending or flexing, uh, you know, kind of curving, then you're pressing too hard. And when you press too hard, you can push your medium, whether it's chalk paste or ink, underneath the holes and that's not good. There might be one teeny little spot here where I need to come back and um, finish up, relay down my stencil. Okay, let me just see. Any big globs? I went a little crazy with my chalk paste. I did not need that much. And of course I have it all over my fingers too, but let's just take a little peek and see. It's so cute. The other thing I could do is I could just use my pins, my chalk paste pins, to sort of fill in. I don't have a finger that's clean to hold this down. There we go. I'm throwing it in my little tub of water over here, face down, so it can soak until, until I can get into the kitchen, look at my hands, to, um, to spray my stencil and clean it up. Okay, this is a mess on my fingers. And there are a few little spots where I, looks like I smeared it. But let me show you what we've got going on right here. And then we're gonna set it aside and let it start to dry. And we're gonna move on to one of the other ones. 
Okay, I cannot touch anything with these hands without making a huge mess. So talk amongst yourselves while I clean up. Well, hey, Karen Barnes Cash, Cash -a Beer, Cash -a Beer. Happy Friday back to you from Georgia. What's everyone doing this weekend? And is, tell me this question, the answer to this question. Who has moved on to do fall and Christmas projects? Or who is still doing summer? I'm still doing some summer and a mix of things that are not seasonal. Oops. I'm gonna clean that up later. Um, and I did show some past fall projects. Look how cute that is. Okay, ignore my little boo-boo right here because I'll fix that after the fact. Um, and I'll probably come back and finish the ears off. But it's super, super, super cute. Um, okay. So this is what it looks like. This is the other side. Now, I'm, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show you how to achieve this. I used this cutout, this MDF 17 inch cow head from magnoliadiy.com. I used it and a pencil on this big round and I traced it. So that I could do a cow head on here too and show you how to paint it. And that's what we're gonna do now. And we're gonna also build a head thing for this so I can show you how to do that as well. Okay, so before I came live, I traced it. And then I um, painted the cow, this color right here, it's mineral. It's Waverly chalk matte finish no prep acrylic paint it's plaid p-l-a-i-d brand and i get it at walmart so i painted the cow and then i painted the edges white and now what we're gonna do is i'm gonna try to find paper plate that's available to use as our painting palette this one will work right here and i'm gonna pour Oh, Angie says she's canning this weekend. Oh my gosh, I used to do that with my grandma. Um, and I miss those days. Uh, she ha always had a huge garden. Uh, my sister and I would sneak into her garden and eat all of the peas <laughs> right there while we were standing in the field. Um, but, oh, I miss those days. Those were so wonderful. So I'm just taking, I think I'm going to skip the black for right now. I'm just taking my colors, including a little bit of white, and I'm putting them in blobs on a paper plate painting palette. All right, and we're going to start with the dark brown, and I'm just going to do like squigglies. Just gonna take some dark brown and start doing this kind of movement. This is really what those Highland cows, what their hair actually looks like. It's so funny. And um, I don't know if they groom them or what they do, but at some point I would think, man, it would become an obstacle for the poor cows to be able to see, and it must be hot. Okay, nobody taught me how to do this, and like I said at the start, I'm not an artist, so if you have a better way to do this part, do it your way. <laughs> This is just what came to me. 
Oh, Charlene Blondino says her brother is in open heart surgery right now. Well, I will be praying for him. Please send me a personal message later this afternoon and let me know how he's doing. Also, let me know what his first name is. Okay, and we can all, you know, as crafting friends, we can all lift each other up in prayer. So if you're watching this live, pray for her brother. Okay, now I'm just taking some of this caramely color that is called hazelnut. And I'm not letting this dry in between because I think the mixing looks good. I do want to tell you something I did different for the other cow, um, and that was about his ears, but I decided not to do that on this one. So I'll show you that in a minute. I'm grabbing a little bit of the caramel and a little bit of the brown, and I'm just kind of pulling it on here. Okay, now let's grab some of this taupey color that our cow is, which is called Mineral. And let's mix it with our brown and just pull some of that on. This part doesn't need to be super detailed um, because you're gonna mostly cover it up with the hair piece that we're gonna make. And for my friends out there that are like actual real kind of artistic types, I would love to see what you're doing. Okay, now I'm gonna grab some of this tan and a little bit of white and pull in some lighter colors. I'll hold this up in just a second and show you where we're at. I do want some in the center to come down longer. she I don't know which it is my friend um, Joey Bailey who you might know her her page is called created in awe uh, we were talking about this cow project yesterday and she was telling me that she asked her um, followers when she did her own version of a cow head to give her some suggestions for names for the cow and she was telling me it was so cute, all the really old fashioned names that people were suggesting for the cow. And I thought, oh, that's so sweet. So I don't know if our cows are gonna be girls or boys. They don't have horns, so they are either young male cows or they're female. Um, but anyways, if you wanna throw out some names, some like old fashioned names that you might name a cow, that would be fun to see, so put them. Highland cows are dark reddish brown. They are, that's true, Patty, but also that are, there are some that are more taupe and tan colored. Um, and I know that because I looked at like a thousand images on the internet of Highland cows to come to get my ideas together. So there's a variety. Some are very brown, but some are more blondish, tannish, sandy, blonde colored too. Um, anyway, so throw out some names. Rosie, Billy, that's a great name. Um, she was telling me that um, that there were a lot of like uh, Molly and Bessie and 
rosy and there were a lot of really daisy jeanette bell says daisy myrtle i love that name linda mabel yeah there's tons of fun names clarabelle oh my gosh deborah that's perfect the angus are black the dairy cows tend to be black and white which is what i'm going for with this one yeah so just like people Cows come in all different colors. Olivia, Amelia, Bossy. I like that. Yeah, fun. Keep the names coming. Edith. That's funny, Patty. Lady Bell. Oh, I love that, Sherry. Uh, yeah, there's lots of you guys hopping on. Hey, and if you're liking these projects, Think about sprinkling this to your social media. I would love that. Okay, so let's let's pause on this for a minute and let me show you how I built this for the other one. Because it's super easy. We'll let that try to dry just a smidge. Okay, for the other one, I just used some brown felt, which is what I'm going to use again for this one. And this is just brown felt from Walmart. Nothing fancy. We'll probably trim the size of this. Kind of doing like a, I don't know, like an ovalishy sort of thing. And then this is this rope that you can get decorative nautical rope from Dollar Tree. You could do a ton of different cows with just one, um, one piece of it. So I'm gonna make some long, and then some not quite as long pieces. And so, uh, I know someone will ask how long these are, so let me just measure that right now and tell you. This one is about 16 inches long, and this one is about 13, 14 inches long, something like that. Okay, then you're just gonna pull the strands apart. Then you're going to keep pulling the strands apart until you and these are perfect because they're kind of curly just like these highland cows have that big mane right there in the front and in other parts of their body on their ears and stuff that is sort of this curly hair just pulling this apart Sarah, Rosie, I missed some of the other comments. Thank you so much to everyone who's done stars. Ooh, Clara, I love that name. Lulabelle. Billy, I will get you links as soon as I'm finished and I have a chance to sit down. And anyone else who wants spot, that's cute. Billy says Spot is a good name. Belle is a great name too. Freckles, oh my gosh. Hulu Bell is what Carol says. It kind of looked like moss instead of rope. Um, well, that's because I have leaves on it, but I'll show you this other one up close. Kim, I'll get you links as soon as I'm done. Shadrach, <laughs> Rebecca says Shadrach. Did you know a cow named Shadrach? Is that like Shadrach? Mishrach and Abendabel, Abendagel, the guys um, from the Bible. Is that where that name comes from? Josie, Harmony, oh my gosh. You love my shirt, Jennifer, thank you so much. It's actually a cute little dress, which it is, I live in the suburbs of Atlanta and it's July. And I probably don't need to say anything else, but the humidity is killer. We've been having storms, it seems like, every day, and that's just because it's so hot and the humidity is so high, and I just, ugh, I feel so hot. So I've just been wearing little dresses, like, almost every day. So then I'm going to take a whole bunch of these, and I'm going to gather them up, and notice that I'm doing them, you know, kind of different lengths. We can give it a haircut if we want to. 
Okay, so this is gonna be one bundle, and I'm just gonna take one of these and tie a little knot at the top, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. We're gonna do two of these and kind of lay them on top of each other. Okay, so there's the first one. And then I'll just gather all the rest of this up. Today is garbage day in my neighborhood. And if you hear my dogs having a conniption fit out there, that is most likely what it is all about. They just really get riled up when they hear those garbage trucks in the neighborhood. So this was just two pieces. I mean, you could do this fuller if you want, but I think honestly, this is plenty full. Now I'm just going to do the same thing and tie a knot at the top. And stay with me because I'm going to show you the cow stuffy that I made using this cow that I used to trace on some painter's drop cloth. And the reason why I did painter's drop cloth for this particular item, this stuffy, if you can even believe it, is because I'm out of, I am out of my ivory or white colored um, canvas duck. I use that stuff so fast. Okay, so this is the little piece that we'll be putting up on the top of this cow's head. Let me make this a little flatter. And I'm going to lay one of these in the center, like this, and I'm going to glue it on. And then I'm going to kind of pull the center pieces down and glue them into that so that it won't want to have a part right there in the middle of our cow's hair. See what I mean? And then I'm gonna pull a, little, a few of these kind of out to the side so that they'll lovely, huh? Okay, this idea is, um, this is my take on the about 100 pictures that I looked at on the internet of the Highland cows. They are so cute. If I was going to have a cow, that is what I would want to have for sure. Um, I've also seen a lot of crafters do various cow projects. Um, and this is just my way of achieving the look of the Highland cow, but there's, there's gotta be a lot of other ideas that you could do. So if you don't like this way, but you wanna make some cows, just, you know, sometimes you just gotta make it up as you're going along and do your own thing. And yeah, that's what I have to say about that. Okay, there's our little messy cow hair. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put some flowers on it and then we're gonna build the magnets. Okay, and I have these from um, Walmart. I'm just gonna pull the little heads off of these. Um, Let's take some of the leaves too. You could use Dollar Tree flowers too, or if you have some nice flowers, you could do that, or you could make flowers, or you could, I mean, you could do whatever you want. Okay, so I'm gonna put a couple leaves 
sort of on the sides. We're covering up the under, underneath of our hair. And I am going to, oh, and for this project, I do want to mention this because it's important. I am using my usual low temperature hot glue gun. This is a Sure Bonder Cool Shot Cheapy Mini Plug-In Low Temperature Hot Glue Gun. You can get these everywhere. Walmart, um, Hobby Lobby, Joann's, Michael's everywhere they're under ten dollars there's nothing fancy about this except i do honestly feel like the temperature of the glue because i use the actual Sherbonder glue sticks it is lower and you're less likely to get a hot glue burn if you're working with something like this and i have glue all over my fingers from working with this rope look I'm not even kidding. So I don't, I don't want you to get burned. So make sure you're using a low temperature hot glue gun if you're gonna do this. Okay, so I have two leaves on either side. You could build that out more if you want. And then I'm gonna clip this little back thing that holds it on the floral pick off of these. And they're gonna go flying all over the place. <laughs> Seriously. Okay, let's put one right here in the center. The um, little head pieces that I'm doing today are mostly all fallish, but you could do a head piece for every season if you would like. I think that would be super cute. And, um, and then if you're using magnets like I am, you can just swap it in and out. And I think it would be really fun. Okay, here's the start. We could go further across with the flowers if we wanted, but I'm just gonna poke some of these little ones in here. And then I will have five pieces and I think that is probably plenty. Mary, well, hey, Mary. Oh my gosh, you guys, I have to tell you about Mary. Mary Crowlack Sharon, yesterday, um, I was getting ready to go to the grocery store and my husband came in and said, you have a box. And I was like, what? I'm not expecting anything. And it was a package from Mary and it was so cute. I opened it up and I just, started smiling. It was a small ladies size drill. And she put one little note in there that said every girl needs her own drill. And I'm thinking that she had just seen me using my husband's drill that is 50 years old from when he was like 13. <laughs> um, but anyways, Mary, thank you so much. That, that just had me smiling for the whole rest of the day. Okay, so here's our little head piece. Now, where are my magnets? Okay, let's talk about these for a second. These are so awesome to use, but they're also so terrible for little ones, children or animals to eat. Um, they can, they result in children and animals having to have major surgery. So, because they get stuck inside your stomach and your intestines on each other, um, if you eat more than one piece. So if you're going to use these, and I use them all the time, just keep them up and keep an eye on where they are. And um, don't leave them low where a dog or a kitty or a, a little one could get them because they look interesting. And you know, little ones want to put everything in their mouth. They could look like a candy or something. So that is my... Um, 
before I was an at-home mommy and before I did this whole crafting thing, I was a lawyer. And that's my little lawyer's <laughs> warning for you. Just And it's not even a liability thing. It's just that I have heard terrible stories and I would hate for anything like that to happen to you. Okay, I think this is dry enough. We're going to live with it. Okay, and here's our little head thing. And we might need to trim some of this because it's pretty darn long. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay two stacks of buttons on the top of my cow, like right at the top of this, this cow's head. I'm going to say this is a girl because she's wearing flowers in her hair. And I'm um, just going to glue them down. The reason why I do two at a time is because I know that these two are mated well. Because magnets have positive and negative sides. And sometimes you might notice that you can't get them to attract to each other because of that reason. So this way I know for sure that they're going to work. And then I'm just going to put some glue on this top piece. And I'm going to press my little... Thing on. Oh, it's so cute. <coughs> Excuse me. I mean, it's so seriously cute. Oh my gosh. Okay, so here is this cow. And this is basically how I built the other one. Um, this comes off, and you can change it, and then it will go right back on. And you could, I mean, we could use some of these markers that I'm so in love with. And we could do all kinds of cute little things around the side of it, like little squiggle dot dot dot, squiggle dot dot dot, or we could just outline it. Um, or there's a hundred different things that we could do to really doll this up. But really what I mostly wanted to do was just show you the idea of how I painted our little cow. This is our Highland cow. And here's the, the sister. And how I built the head thing for this. Back. So that's how I did that style of a cow. Okay, I'm going to take this off because we're going to come back to this in just a second. We're going to finish it off and we're going to build a head thing for that one too. So this would be super cute just sitting in an easel and um, you could write something on it. You could stencil something on it. There's tons of cute things that you could do with that. But let's move on to this. Okay, this is some painter's drop cloth. Uh, again, I didn't have any more of the... Um, canvas duck fabric to use. Darn it, I'm going to have to go locate some again. I've been crafting up a storm with it. For example, last week we made this and it turned out so darn cute. If you missed this video, this is just a stuffy door hanger in the shape of a sunflower with these separate little compartments that give it a ton of personality and definition. Um, I've been doing a lot of stuffies lately, I guess, and that's why I don't have any more canvas duck on hand. But I traced the head on this fabric, and then I, I glued it this way so that you could see. But if you're doing it for real, don't put this side on the inside. I cut about not quite half an inch all the way around it, just to make it a little bit bigger. And then, I used that same stencil and just some chalk paste uh, to do this. Okay, and I've started gluing it together. We're going to finish it up. I'm going to show you how to stuff it and we're going to build a little head thing. And this is just to give you an idea, one more thing that would be super cute that you could do with this cow head MDF piece and with the cow print um, 
the cow print stencil. Okay, how far did I get? I'm going to close this up just a little bit further and then we'll stuff it and we'll do a head thing. And I may come back and finish the ears, but I just didn't have time to get back to that. I was too excited to come to you with all of these four ideas. Oh my goodness, thank you so much for all the stars. That is so kind of you, I so appreciate it. If you want links um, to the to the cow stencil, the cow head, the cow tags, uh, anything else, just say link in the comments. I'm just gonna quickly fill this full of fluff. And this is just Crafters Polyfill from Walmart. Normally I'd take my time to pull the fibers apart, but I've been talking a while and I still have more to show you. So I'm going to just get this done so you can get this idea. So this, that um, cow head MDF makes a perfect, almost like a pattern for you to make a stuffy of a cow head. And if I was going to do it again, I would use the canvas duck. Oh, uh, look at all those thumbs and hearts and all that business. Gloria, I will get you links the second I'm finished. Okay, so let's glue our ear a little bit more and then we'll finish stuffing it and we're gonna build a little head thing for this one. And I'm just gonna glue it straight on here, but you could do the same thing if you wanted and you could um, build it on magnets or something. Ooh, oopsie. Okay. I'm gonna leave a hole right here. We'll finish stuffing it, I'll close it up, and then we'll just real quick put some flowers. Beverly says she loves my cow projects. Okay, Billy says another name for a cow is Rocky. Let's keep going with that. Tell me what you guys think would be some good names for these cows, for the Highland cow and for this dairy cow or whatever you wanna call these black and white ones. And tell me also, um, Okay, there's people, there are um, people on here sharing links and there's bad guys on here. So just ignore that and as soon as I'm done, I will ban and block all those people. Um, I see a couple that have come through. They're so stupid to think that you guys are gonna fall for any of their tricks to hustle you out of your money. Um, and there's nothing I can do to prevent them from coming on. All I can do is the second I see them, I can ban and block them. And that's what I do. Anyways, I'm off on a tangent. I love Daisy. I love Elsie. Elsie the cow. That's so cute. Okay, so here's our little stuffy. I would probably just use a piece of this. Um, this is the easiest thing to do and the back of this little cow thing isn't going to be seen at all it's going to be it's going to disappear so I'll just make a knot with the loop and glue it on the back of our little cow head So let's build her little head piece. And I got these flowers also at Walmart. Um, they have a ton of fall things. Typically, I don't love the faux florals 
at Walmart or at um, Dollar Tree, but they work just fine for this kind of a project. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put a couple of leaves on either side. strings galore. Oh my goodness. Let's go all the way down. Okay, and then I'm going to I cut the little um points off the end of these flowers. I need one more. I think we're good with that. Okay, and I'm going to put the darkest one in the center. so many glue strings so tell me in the comments which kind of cows you like the best that was super interesting yesterday to see all you guys's answers um, let me know if you want links to any of the supplies stay with me because we're not finished we're still gonna do our other cow okay so I probably will finish her ears off um, and I'll, that'll just mean that I'll just take that stencil after it's clean and dry and I'll lay it back down to cover up the ends. But um, that's not too bad, really, for a cute little cow stuffy. And this, this costs nothing, seriously, like almost nothing to make. So, okay, let's come back to this. This was the one that I stenciled earlier. This side is the Highland Cow. Um, this is going to bother me, this smudge. So I may have to come back. I can't get that cleaned up. Let's see. And put a little white paint over the top of it just to A little better. Here's the other side. And if, if you joined us late, come back and watch from the beginning because this, um, where's my ear? Here it is. This turned out so cute. And we're going to finish the other side. This is our Highland Cow side which we would have it like this when we're displaying it on this side and we could swap out the things for different seasons, but then we would take those off when we're gonna display it on this side. And we're going to build a little headpiece for this one as well. And I'm, because I have brown out, I'm gonna use brown again. Uh, but for this one, I would probably use either black or white uh, felt. And let's also do a, a tag, okay? And let's do it with black chalk paste. Um, there's several different things that you could do. This set right here is called Farmhouse um, Minis. I honestly think these pieces, they're super cute. I think they're too big for these tags. But this is a cute stencil, and I wanted to show it to you. So I would be more likely to use the this one called 
Farmhouse 12 pack. And um, it has a lot of cute little pieces that are the perfect size for our little tag. And um, I think I'm gonna do this one right here that has the spotted cow on it. So there's 12 little pieces in this set and they're adorable. I need to find my Sharpie. There we go. And I'm gonna label the back of this. Farmers market that's so i will know which side of this little carrier sheet to put the stencil back on when i'm done when it's washed and ready to go back on and i'm also going to fuzz it because it's brand new so it looks like this and i'm just going to pull it off of the backing sheet this is a tacky towel Works great for fuzzing on the green side. That's what it was for. Um, brand new stencils from MagnoliaDIY.com are super duper sticky. And when you're pulling them up when they're newer, they can sometimes stretch a little bit. So you want to just add a little fuzz. You could do it on an apron, on a t-shirt, on a pair of jeans, a pair of khakis, that kind of thing. So I am just going to lay this on my little ear tag. And press it down. We're going to get some of our black chalk paste out. And a little squeegee. This is not going to take much at all. it on here and then I'm going to pull it off, pull off the clumps so that I can see the stencil design underneath and that will tell me if I've missed any area. Okay, so this is what that looks like. Super cute. Okay, I'm throwing my stencil into this tub of water. And I'm getting my fingers all dirty all over again. Okay, we're going to let this dry for a few minutes and then we'll build it on a magnet like we have this one. Okay, and we could add a flower to it if we want. Okay, so this is our, um, our little cow, and I'm gonna be building the um, flowers. We're not gonna do hair, because these kind of cows don't have that long brown hair, um, but I wanna be able to change it, so that's why I'm not just gluing the flowers straight onto this piece. Okay, and I have these flowers here. And we can do some of these too, that would be cute. And we could even do one of these. I'm having one of those days where I'm dropping everything. Where is the cow from? Uh, Kimberly the cow is from magnoliadiy.com, which is my website. Um, and if you just will say link in the comments, as soon as I'm finished here, I'll get you a direct link that will take you straight to the cow MDF, and it'll also take you straight to the cow stencil and the ear tags and all of that, so you don't have to hunt it down. Okay. Do some leaves on this, that would be cute. Just cutting these off.
that'll get covered up so you won't won't see it. I'm so glad you guys can't see my whole craft room <laughs> because it is a complete disaster. Oh my word. Okay. I wanted to do these on here. I may just stick with these. I'm not sure what these are. They kind of remind me of zinnias, but I'm not sure if that's what these are or not. Cute. So when I'm done with these projects, I'll just pull the little heads off of all these pieces and throw them in a Ziploc bag. And then I will stick them in my tub of faux florals and I, I know there'll be other projects that I could use them for. Okay. And here's my little floral headpiece for this one. Okay, so let's do the same thing with the magnets. I'm gonna take um, two piles, two stacks of two, and I'm just gonna glue one side of them onto my little cow's head. And then we'll put some on this part right here. And we'll stick our little floral right there. And it could be bigger if you wanted. And this is just what I cranked out in 20 seconds. And let's do our little ear. Let's find a small, let's put this right here. I just glued one little flower into the hole right here. And then I'm going to get a stack of two magnets. Which ear do we want to put it in? Let's put it right here. No, let's do it on this side. So here is my set of two magnets. Here's, can you see the magnets on the top of her head? And let's glue this puppy on here. I might possibly come back and make um, this top piece bigger. What do you guys think? So here's the other side. This is our Highland cow. And there's our Highland cow. And then when you flip this over, pull her hair out of the way, here's our other cow. What do you guys think? And all year long, we could switch out the little head pieces. Uh, I, what I wanna know in the comments is, which one of these do you prefer? 
And of course, there's always going to be more things that you could add to it. I just want to know. This, this one I'm going to call the dairy cow or a black and white cow. The other one with the big bushy hair in the front is a highland cow. They're Scottish, apparently. Tell me what you think. Oh, Juanita says that her nieces have a couple of Highland cows. Oh, they are so cute. Oh my goodness. Okay, so here's this project. And then, here's this one. And I just, you could do this on any kind of wood surface that you might have handy. I just used the, the wood MDF to trace it and paint it on this. And then here's the other one that we did, which is just to give you the idea that you could also make a stuffy, a cow head stuffy, and you just use the wood piece to trace on whether you're gonna use um, painter's drop cloth or canvas deck or denim or whatever you wanted. Um, I just wanted to show you these couple of ideas. What do you guys think? Tell me in the comments. Let me know if you <clears throat> want links. Um, I provide links just to make it super easy for you. So you can just go click <laughs> and it'll take you right there to each item. And you don't have to go hunt things down. Um, yeah, so let me know if you want links. Let me know if you have questions. Billie Jean says that she likes the Highland one better. Um, so does Pat Krieg. Wow. Okay. Debbie McNall Jones says that she likes Jersey cow. She loves their eyes. And so she likes the Highland. Jennifer Holzer, Holzer says she likes the dairy. Um, oh, I could make an ear tag for this one right here too. Yes. Or for this one. I have one more because when you get these ear tags, they come a set of three. And I really feel like I will do something cute around the edge of this. I may even outline the cow with my markers. These guys that I love so much. But anyways, hopefully I've completely overwhelmed you with ideas. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Feel free to sprinkle. Thank you for all those awesome stars. If you haven't, taken a second to look and see if you've followed this page, DIY Dreaming. You can do that up here somewhere and you can also turn your notifications on. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel and like this video as well. Alrighty, you guys have a blessed and wonderful rest of your day today. I'll get pictures of everything. I'll put them here in the comments. I'll get links out to everyone. Um, and I will see you guys tomorrow. I don't know what we'll be doing. I have multiple things in the works, but I'm not sure. <laughs> It'll be something different for sure. So I will see you guys later. Thanks. If I can get it turned off. <laughs>